Hello and welcome to Full Throttle. This weekend we are at Brands Hatch, one of the most iconic racing circuits in the UK. And a double header of racing coming up. We've got the classic touring car racing club championships with a plethora of beautiful classes. Before we get underway, here's your commentator Dave Goddard with some more information. Thanks very much, Ewan, and a very good afternoon, race fans. Welcome to Brands Hatch, the home of motorsports in the southeast of England here on BARC TV for the first of two days of motorsports presented by the BARC, the British Automobile Racing Club. The sun currently out here in Kent, and we'll be shortly getting underway in just a few minutes' time with our first race of the day on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, just under two kilometres in length. Only one of the shorter circuits, but uh, certainly one of the most spectacular in British motorsports. The history of this circuit goes back to uh, before the Second World War. It was a grass track motorcycle venue in its early days before the tarmac was laid down after the war and car racing began in around 1949 and has been held here ever since one of the UK's premier motorsport venues. A light rain has been forecast, but fingers crossed it is holding off at the moment. It's cloudy here at Brands Hatch, but it is currently dry we'll say it quietly we don't want to put the curse of the commentator on things and we're about to bring on our first race of the day the classic touring car racing club burton power blue oval saloon series for everything ford and the jaguar enthusiasts club saloon and gts it's a pair of fords that have qualified on the front row malcolm harding with his zack speed escort alongside the very rapid ford anglia of stephen goldsmith the second row the first of the jags is colin philpot with his xjs alongside tony paxman in his mark one escort then the supercharged Jaguar XJR6 of Tom Robinson, fresh from a couple of wins at Castle Coombe, goes uh, alongside James Dunkley. He's well up in his uh, Ford Fiesta XR2. Fourth row, Simon Beeman with his Escort RS2000 Maxi alongside Dan Mackay in his Fiesta. The fifth row, Tom Lenthal and Michael Holt, a pair of Jaguars. On the sixth row, the current Jaguar Championship leader, Michael Seaborn, starts alongside Colin Claxton. He's in a Mark 1 Escort. On row seven, Craig Owen in his Sierra Cosworth alongside the Fiesta of Sam Daffin. Martin Reynolds in his very impressive Ford Anglia. Almost a hot rod style Ford Anglia he's got here. Starts alongside Derek Pierce with his Jaguar XK8. And on row nine, Daniel Stewart's Jaguar XJS alongside Will Hunt in his Ford Fiesta. That's the first nine rows of the grid. On the 10th row, we've got the very experienced Malcolm Wise. He's in a Sierra Cosworth alongside Rick Walker's Jaguar XJS. Michael Atkinson is next in another Jag. And Anton Martin in his Ford Fiesta, the ex-Banger racer. Chris Boone, the former Jaguar champion. Good to have him back this weekend in his XK8. Starts alongside the XJ40 of Tim Morant. Then we've got Peter Moffat at number 41. He's in an Escort Mark 1 alongside Stuart Kay, the chairman of the Classic Touring Car Racing Club. He's in his Ford Capri. Good to see that car back out after an accident at Silverstone earlier this year. Dean Sewell and Guy Conyu are next in a pair of Jaguar XJ6 Series 1s. Then Simon Dunford celebrating his birthday this weekend in his XJS alongside Cliff Ryan. Good to see him back out. And finally, David Ringham completes the grid with his XJS. Before the cars head out to the grid, down in the paddock earlier on, Ewan Dunlop caught up with a couple of the drivers. So we are in the paddock with Malcolm Harding, pole sitter in the Blue Oval Saloon Series. How was your lap today? Yeah, it was all right. Struggled a little bit, a bit greasy out there, but I think everyone's finding it like that. Um, hopefully it'll come together in the race. It should be good. Now, you've had several wins this season, but this is your first pole position. Yeah, I believe it is, yeah. And uh, Brands Hatch, iconic race circuit. What is it like taking a car like this, Rain Druids and Brabham Straight? That's brilliant. It's old MOT failure, isn't it? So everyone likes them. So that's all a bit, a bit of fun, really, yeah. Well, we're here in the paddock with Colin Philpott. Colin, first qualifying session of the weekend, and you are the fastest Jaguar on the track. Second on the uh, grid. Tell us about your qualifying. Yeah, I was quite surprised, really. I um, wasn't very comfortable out there. A little bit of understeer from the front of the car. Got a little bit busy out there. There's quite a few cars out there at the time. Um, but yeah, it felt good. Engine felt really strong. You know, it's something I've built over the winter, that, that lump. And I haven't had much success to start of this season, but it seems to be going pretty well today. Fantastic. So. Uh, bonnets off at the moment. What are you doing between now and the start of the race? Just like everything really, check all your levels, water levels, oil levels, um, just make sure everything's tight, nothing's going to be coming loose. Um, yeah, just check, check, visual checks all the time. Carl's coming up to the grid then for race number one, the Burton Power Blue Oval Saloon Series. Away they go. 
Down towards the first corner, 15 minutes of racing to come then. The two Fords go level into the first turn. Good start by Tom Robinson trying to get up the inside into uh, Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Looks like everybody is going to get round OK. They then head up Halewood Rise into Druids. Malcolm Harding leads the way, then dodging about on his tail is Stephen Goldsmith. Colin Philpott in the first of the Jags in third place. Round Druids Hill Bend they go for the first time. It's two Fords leading two Jaguars. Malcolm Harding it is who has the lead into Graham Hill Bend for the first time. Stephen Goldsmith in that deceptively uh, standard looking Ford Anglia in second place. Somebody running wide onto the grass there, Simon Beamont in the Escort RS2000 Maxi. Oh, he's got sideways there, he's going off, he's heading for the barriers. Oh, good save by Simon Beamont, he's heading for the Grand Prix circuit. Bit of rally cross there from Simon Beamont. So he said that car's uh, better known as a rally car. He did a bit of rallying there through uh, towards Surtees and McLaren. The leaders come across the line for the first time. Malcolm Harding from Steve Goldsmith, Colin Philpott in third place. Tom Robinson in fourth, the second of the Jaguars. Colin Claxton has made a great start. He's up in a fifth position. He's gained seven places around that first lap in his escort. Tony Paxman is next, then Tom Lenthal, James Dunkley, Martin Reynolds and Michael Seaborn rounding up the top ten. Martin Reynolds having gained half a dozen places off the line there in his Anglia. It's Malcolm Harding, that beautiful Castrol liveried escorts very reminiscent of the escorts used to compete in oh and the leader's got sideways there he's lost it round goes Malcolm Harding a full 360 degree spin he loses the lead I wonder if there's some fluid down there at Paddock Hill Bend that was a very uncharacteristic error by Malcolm Harding and he's down to fourth place it's Steve Goldsmith in his Ford Anglia who has taken the lead now Malcolm Harding is catching our race leader great season he's having he's won the last four Blue Oval Saloon series in a row at uh, Donington and Castle Coombe. Swing their way through the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend along the Cooper Strait. It's not particularly straight, there is a kink in the middle you can see there. Phil Pot still leads the Jags ahead of Robinson, then the two Mark I escorts of Claxton and Paxman. Try saying that, but you've had a few. Martin Reynolds up to seventh in his Anglia. Then we've got Tom Lenthal, the number 59 Ford Fiesta of Dan Mackay, and Simon Beeman, recovering from his first lap moment, rounds out the top ten under eight and a half minutes of this race to go seven laps completed and uh, Malcolm Harding's just on the fastest lap of the race 54.028 seconds he's caught Steve Goldsmith for the lead now the Anglia and the escort together to uh, Druid's Hill Bend Goldsmith defending Harding had a look but he was too far back there coming into the hairpins and they've got back markers ahead of them now Malcolm Harding comes from Rygate in Surrey Malcolm Wise is the first man ahead of them in the Sierra Cosworth. Now to be careful here around the outside, Malcolm Harding, he's got him under braking for Druids on the outside. Good bit of driving there, Malcolm Harding, and takes the escort back into the lead after that spin. They didn't even need to wait until they got to the back markers. Wise moves aside, lets them through. There's David Ringham, number 45 in his XJS. Malcolm Harding holding on here. Will it be last lap this time? They may get two more laps out of this, only a short circuit and Stephen Goldsmith is not finished yet he's right up under the tail of Malcolm Harding here comes the Anglia he's going for the inside as they come into Surtees Bend he's going through is he side by side through Surtees into McLaren can he get the overlap he's going to be on the outside for clear ways Harding later on the brakes and he holds his lead he survives that attack from Steve Goldsmith I don't think it's going to be Goldsmith lining him up here 10 seconds on the clock as they come up onto the Jack Brabham straights Across the line, the last lap board is out. Stephen Goldsmith will see that and know this is his final chance to attack Malcolm Harding for the lead. Colin Philpott all set to win the Jaguars. Here they come then up towards Druid Hill Bend for the final time. It's going to be close between the two Fords. Will it be Escorts? Will it be Anglia? Round Druids they come. Now this is where the Anglias look stronger. He can try and pull alongside on the Cooper Strait if he gets the tighter exit here. Goes to tail through Graham Hill Bend. The Anglia just a little bit sideways there on the kerb. He's going to try and get up the inside into Surtees. I don't think he's going to do it. That was his chance there, I think. Malcolm Harding's now going to defend the inside line into Clearways. Oh, he's breaked a little bit late there. He's moved a little bit wide. This is Goldsmith's opportunity. He can try and pull alongside here as they come out of Clark Co. It's going to be very close on the run to the line between the two forwards. I don't think Goldsmith's going to do it. It's going to be Malcolm Harding in the escort. Five wins in a row 
in the Blue Oval Saloon Series, supported by Burton Power Products. Brilliant stuff. We'll have a look at the results from that one then. Malcolm Harding, the winner, takes the class victory in uh, Class S for the Blue Oval Saloon Series as well. Just two tenths of a second clear of Steve Goldsmith. He wins Class B. First Jaguar home was Colin Philpot in third in his XJS. He wins Class C. And Class D goes to Tom Robinson in the XJR6. Tony Paxman was fifth overall, and he wins his class as well. Blue Oval Class C. And Colin Claxton in sixth place. Simon Beeman to class winning seventh place. And Martin Reynolds, Tom Lenthal and Will Hunt. Michael Seaborn 11th wins Class B for the Jags ahead of Rick Walker in 12th. Derek Pierce was 13th the lap down. 14th place goes to uh, Sam Daffin in his Fiesta. And Daniel Stewart completing the top 15. 16th over the line was Tim Morant. He wins Class A for the Jaguars ahead of uh, Stuart Kay in his Capri. Then it was Dean Sewell, Simon Dunford, uh, number 41 escort of Peter Moffat was next home, and then Malcolm Wise in his uh, Sierra Cosworth. And number 92 of uh, Atkinson was next home, then David Ringham, we lost Cliff Ryan, Michael Holtz, and Mackay, Conyu, Owen, Dunkley and Martin were all non-finishers. We can now hand down to Ewan Dunlop down in Park Ferme, who's ready to talk to some of the drivers. So we are in Park Ferme with our Jags winner, Colin Phil, but we spoke to you about 10 minutes ago, Fields. <laughs> yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it didn't get the best of starts, but yeah, I was in there with, with the first two runners, but hung in there and it's quite a comfortable third, really. Caught up with them back markers a bit quick, that makes it a bit more interesting. But yeah, it's very slippery out there today, I don't know why, just simply sliding, I don't know if you catch it, but it's backs hanging out, front under steering a bit. So are you going to change your setup at all for the next race or keep it as it is? You're on a winning formula at the moment. I think I'll leave it alone, shall I? That's <laughs> <laughs> so, been good, you know. Um, I enjoyed it. Good race, so I think leave it alone. Just hang on to it a bit tighter. So. What do you do now between now and the next race? Same as you see earlier on, really. Just check everything, nuts and bolts, oil levels, water levels. Just nothing's going to fall off, nothing's going to let me down. Oh, yeah. You've got to keep going. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, qualified second, finished second as well. Talk yeah. to us about your morning. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I haven't been to Brands for a couple of years now, so um, didn't have a chance to test. So first time out, it was, it was good. Yeah, it did as well. So what do you do between now and the next race? Anything exciting or just chill out and relax? Yeah, just chill and relax. I must admit, it's uh, been quite a short circuit. You work here the whole time. You don't really get any time for a break. So Colin did really well and uh, had a bit of a close call with the, the Zach Speed Capri coming down paddock. So and uh, he got me and I, I just couldn't bring it back. So. And any different tactics between now and the second race? What do you do sort of um, in that second uh, 15 minutes? So um, we're racing tomorrow, so I've got a bit of time, so I'll probably stop tyres around, change the damper settings. Struggling a bit of oversteer coming through clear way, so we'll see if we can improve on that really. And uh, yeah, give Colin a good run for his money. And you good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Brands Hatch Circuit here in Kent. I'm sure many of you will have heard the news of a tragic accident that occurred here at Brands Hatch during yesterday's meeting, which very sadly claimed the life of a volunteer marshal. Motorsport can be dangerous. It says that on uh, tickets to events and on uh, signs at events that you will all have seen. However, week in, week out, hundreds, thousands of Men and women from all walks of life, up and down the UK and around the world, give up their free time as volunteers to stand at trackside and make this sport happen. We could not go racing. There would be no motorsport without volunteer marshals. They're always there to assist drivers and ensure a smooth and safe running of events, rarely thinking that they might be the ones who could need assistance. And that sadly became a reality yesterday. Our thoughts go out to the family and friends of the volunteer marshal who so tragically lost their lives yesterday and to everyone present at yesterday's event and their families and friends. And full credit to all the other officials, marshals, medics, recovery crews and so on who promptly and expertly dealt with what was a tragic and unfortunate accident. No matter what form of motorsport 
marshals around the country are one big family and tragically this weekend one member of it has been lost the outpouring on social media and beyond has shown what a great uh, family motorsport is and we pay tributes to a lost member of the marshalling family the orange army here at brands hatch here today We are sure that our friend and colleague from the Orange Army would have wanted the show to go on. And therefore, we continue with racing here at Brands Hatch. Cars coming up to the grid for, hit for race number one, then the pre-66 touring cars. We can hand down to Ewan Dunlop in the pits, who's got uh, some of the drivers for us. And we are here in the paddock with Alan Greenhall, fastest in the pre-66. You're used to being on pole position, aren't you? I like being on pole position. It's uh, it's the best place to start from, um, so long as I can see the lights. You know, some some of the tracks, the line is so close to the lights, and I have to uh, uh, duck down to see them. But uh, yes, now I prefer to be on the front. Always the best place to be, and you've converted several of those this season into wins as well. You're having a great championship. Yes, the uh, it's not going too badly, except in order to score points, you have to really have three in the class. And so most of the season, we've only had two. So that means that uh, you can't score maximum points. So championship is not in my grasp yet. But um, maybe, well, we've got three now. So uh, hopefully the three will become regulars and um, then there's a better chance. Good to hear from Alan Green all there, and he sits on pole position for our first race of the day, the Pultec Race Engines Pre-66 Touring Cars, a wonderful mixture of classic machinery on the grid. Alan Greenhall on pole alongside him, Robin Slater with his Ford Anglia. Second row, the first of the minis, Barry Syme, all the way from Scotland, starts alongside James Ibbotson, great efforts in his Hillman Imp. Row three, little and large, you've got Piers Grange in his Ford Mustang alongside Neil Bray in his Mini. And then the fourth row, a pair of Minis, Nathan Williams in the number 12 car alongside number 60, which is Michael Davies. On row five, we have Pat Keneally in the first of the Lotus Cortina, starting alongside Kevin Swan in his Ford Anglia. Row six, Andy Mesham Mini, Martin Reynolds Anglia. And on the seventh row, James Burrows in uh, his mini starts alongside uh, Adam Gittings in the first of the Morris Miners. The uh, next row is row eight, which is Eric Ez Walker with his Anglia alongside Michael Loveland in a Hillman Imp. The ninth row of the grid, Luke Wilson in his Austin A40 starts alongside Paul Cooper's Ford Cortina. Row 10, uh, we should have seen Freddie Brown with his Hillman Imp, but he's a non-starter, I believe, due to engine problems. Starting alongside reigning champion Patrick Harris, number one, with his Morris Minor. Good to see Tim Scott Andrews uh, back out. He hasn't raced for a while. He's in a Ford Falcon alongside uh, Stephen Evans in his Austin A40. The penultimate row of the grid, uh, Nathan Beresford. He's in a BMW 1800 Ti alongside Keith Wright in his Morris Minor. David Hall, who had uh, problems in qualifying with his Lotus Cortina, starting uh, at the back. It's time to go racing here at uh, Brands Hatch. Orange Army, this meeting is for you. Revs begin to rise, and away we go over 15 minutes down towards the first corner. Not the best of starts by the big Ford Falcon, Robin Slater up alongside him as they head into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Barry Syme in third place in his mini. Piers Grange with a good start in the uh, Ford Mustang. They filter their way through Paddock Bend and the power of the Falcon tells. Takes the lead up the hill, but look at Barry Syme up the inside in the mini. He's going to go through into second place at Druid's Hill Bend for the first time. Fourth place, Neil Bray in the mini. That's Piers Grange. James Ibbotson sixth 
in the Hillman Imp as they come down the hill into the left-hander at uh, Graham Hill Bend. Clean start so far. The Morris Minor of Adam Gittings well up there, the Black Cup. Side-by-side side, Martin Reynolds there in the Anglia with one of the minis. It's Alan Greenall who will lead the first lap. Bit of uh, understeer from uh, the 25 there of Barry Syme. Third place, Robin Slater in the blue Ford Anglia. They've broken away slightly from uh, Neil Bray, who's up to fourth in his mini ahead of Piers Grange. There's a yellow flag, so possibly somebody has gone off on the uh, entry to Paddock Bend. We'll uh, try and wait and see there. I saw a yellow flag as they came out of clearways onto the start-finish straights. Yes, oh, there's a car stopped coming off the grid. Who is that? That's the problem. Uh, there's a couple of cars that haven't come through. Um, Andy Mesham showing has not completed the first lap, but he may not have taken the start, uh, nor has Michael Loveland in his Hillman Imp. They haven't. They are showing as having not come through, so they may not have taken the start of the race. Meantime, the battle is on for the lead. Barry Sine in the Mini and Alan Greenall. Greenall powering down the straights using the power of the Falcon to take the lead, but the Mini much more nimble in the corners. They swap places in the first part of the lap, the twistier part, but Alan Green all able to power back ahead down Cooper Straits. Robin Slater's got a grandstand view of all of this in his Ford Anglia. Now watch the Falcon pull away. There he goes. Alan Green all pulls away from the little Mini down the straights. First five have broken away. It's uh, the number 12 of Nathan Williams up into sixth position. James Ibbotson goes down to seventh, but he's still leading Class E for the Hillman Imps. Eighth place is Pat Keneally in his Lotus Cortina. Then in ninth position, it is uh, the Davies Mini, Michael Davies driving in race one. There's James Ibbotson, the Class E leader in his beautiful Hillman Imp, the rear engine machine. But here comes Pat Keneally, he's going through at Surtees Bend. The more powerful Lotus Cortina, one of the most iconic saloon car racers of all time. Lead gap is up to three and a half seconds now. Barry Syme having a, a more difficult time dealing with the back markers, I think. As Greenhall manhandles the Falcon through Druid's Bend. There's the other Falcon, Tim Scott Andrews. I saw him race in the BMW Compact Cup. Father Tony, a noted club racer as well, and an eminent uh, motorsport lawyer, Tony Scott Andrews. There's the BMW of... Um, Nathan Beresford going a lap down. Beautiful car, that one, the BMW 1800. Robin Slater's definitely closing here. The gap's down to 0.6 of a second now between Syme and Slater. They are in the same class as well, so this is for points towards the overall championship. The two Class C cars, they've got to lap Tim Scott Andrews. Yes, he gets out of their way. Oh, a lock-up there from Robin Slater. He had to avoid uh, clipping the back of Barry Syme. A little bit over-eager there from Robin Slater, I think. I don't think they're going to catch Alan Greenall. He's uh, starting to get away at the front now. They can have their own fight for second. They're well clear of uh, everybody else. Piers uh, Grange and Neil Bray's battle is well back. Oh, in fact, Piers Grange on the last lap has pulled into the pits, so the Mustang has unfortunately got a problem. We've lost Piers Grange into the pits. Out of our sight there. So it's Neil Bray up to fourth now in the mini, but he's uh, about 12 and a half seconds down on this battle for second place with Nathan Williams in his mini. Rounding up the top five here come the leaders. You can see Grange in the background there making his way back to the paddock. He is a retirement. Here they come out of Clearways. Through Clark curve onto the Sir Jack Brabham Straits, named after the three-time Formula One world champion. And here comes Robin Slater. He's going to go for the outside run down towards Paddock Ben. That's a brave move. He's going to get round the outside of the mini, but who's going to break later? And there's a back marker there as well. I think he's got through into uh, second place there, Robin Slater. Yes, he's done it round the outside. Excellent bit of driving by Robin Slater in the Ford Anglia. That was a very brave move, especially with a back marker on the outside as well. He threaded the eye of the needle there, and he's got second and the lead of Class C away from Barry Syme. Syme goes down to third. They're well clear of Neil Bray in his mini in fourth place. Nathan Williams fifth, and it's Pat Keneally's Lotus Cortina in sixth, leading Class F. James Ibbotson still leads Class E, and Class D is Adam Gittings, but uh, there's just over a minute left on the clock now. We'll get, uh, I think, two more laps out of this. It's going to be close as they cross the line here. Yes, exactly one minute as the race leader crosses the line, so we might see the chequered flag this time. We'll wait and see. Ah, is that a bit of damage I see on the left front of Adam Gittings' car there, the Morris Minor? He may have made contact with... 
uh, Steve Evans in the Austin A40. There goes Alan Greenall, he's heading for victory. Yeah, Evans has pulled into the paddock in his uh, A40, he's out of the race. Down to Graham Hill, Ben comes the leader for the last, for what could be the last time. We'll wait and see if we get one more lap out of this. It was close as they crossed the line on time. Alan Green, all the man from New Malden. Claims the car handles like a boat, but he's handled it very nicely in this one. He's six and a half seconds up now. Ten seconds on the clock as he comes into Clark Curve. Will it be chequered flag at this time, or is the... Uh, Last lap board going to go out. It's going to be very close as they cross the line. Yes, the chequered flag goes out. Alan Greenall takes the win. And our Pultec Race Engines pre-66 touring cars. Greenall confirmed as the winner by seven seconds ahead of Robin Slater. He wins Class C after overtaking Barry Syme in the first of the minis. Neil Bray taking fourth. And Pat Keneally snatching fifth on the last lap, winning Class F in the Lotus Cortina. Nathan Williams, sixth ahead of uh, Michael Davies. Eighth went to Martin Reynolds' Anglia. James Ibbotson wins Class E in ninth place. And Kevin Swan, tenth in his Ford Anglia. Ez Walker, eleventh. Adam Gittings, twelfth in the Morris Minor, winning Class uh, E. Uh, Class D, I should say. James Burrows, thirteenth. Luke Wilson, fourteenth. And Paul Cooper's Cortina, completing the uh, top fifteen. Sixteenth went to uh, Tim Scott Andrews in the Ford Falcon. Patrick Harris, the reigning champion, seventeenth. And uh, I think third place in class, then it was Beresford's BMW next turn, then Tim Dodwell in his Mini. The final finisher was Keith Wright's Morris Minor, because we lost Steve Evans, Piers Grange and Andy Mesham, Michael Loveland a non-starter. OK, we can now hand down to uh, Ewan Dunlop down in Park Ferme, who's ready to talk to some of the drivers. I'm in Park Ferme with Robin Slater, second in the race, first in class, Robin. Thank you very much. Most unexpected. I don't believe that for one second. Talk us through your race. Um, a reasonable start. Uh, Barry clipped me on the Druids, got in front. I thought I'd just hang on, try and get rhythm. And then when the back markers started to appear, I thought now's my chance to pull up and uh, just persevere with following everybody through and managed to outrun Barry on the, uh, on the main straight. Just a, little bit, just a little bit more grunt and he's in. Now, Alan's got a beast of a car in front of us, but you managed to sort of almost keep up with him throughout that race. Yeah. That's a small car circuit. That's a, <laughs> that's a leveller, you know, for the small cars. Well and we've got our winner here as well, Alan. Yeah. That's, that's enough photos, Alan, come on. We spoke to you yesterday, you were we fairly did. confident. Um, it's a beast of a car, the number 77. Yeah. Uh, talk us through that race, because it was fairly close, actually, in places. Well, at the beginning, it's always close, because you know, minis and anglers all over the place, and, um, and uh, it takes a lot longer for these tyres to warm up. But once we got going, it was OK. But um, you know, as I said uh, to the other chap, you know, we're just uh, so desperately upset about yesterday and uh, you know it's a bit of a hollow victory really but um, you know without the marshals we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be racing at all so you know condolences and uh, our thoughts are with the family and race two of the day then will be for the Burton Power Products Blue Oval Saloon Series for everything Ford and also the Jaguar Enthusiasts Club Saloon and GT Championship lots of XJs and XJS is two great British brands on the grid together then. They had a race yesterday and the grid for this one based on the results of that first race. It was Malcolm Harding who took the win in his Zack Speed Mark II Escort. Despite a spin at Paddock Hill Bend, fought back from fifth to first. Had a titanic battle with Stephen Goldsmith, newcomer in his Ford Anglia. They start on the front row for this race. Then we've got the first of the Jaguars. Colin Philpott will be starting alongside Tom Robinson in his supercharged XJR6. The third row, a pair of Mark I escorts, Tony Paxman and Colin Claxton. They had a big battle yesterday as well. Uh, there's no Simon Beamant, so Martin Reynolds will start alone on um, the fourth row. Row five will be Tom Lenthal in his Jaguar and Will Hunt in a Ford Fiesta ST. Row six, the Jaguar Championship leader, Michael Seaborn, with his XJ40 alongside the XJS of Rick Walker. On row 7, XK8, Jaguar of Derek Pierce, Jaguar veteran alongside Sam Daffin in his Ford Fiesta. The 8th row, XJS of Daniel Stewart and XJ40 of Tim Morant. 
On the ninth row, the chairman of the classic touring car racing club, Stuart Kay, with his Ford Capri, alongside Dean Sewell in a Series 1 XJ6. On the tenth row, we have Simon Dunford celebrating his birthday this weekend in his XJS, alongside Peter Moffat. He's in a Mark 1 Escort. Malcolm Wise with his Ford Sapphire Cosworth starts alongside Michael Atkinson's Jaguar. Then we've got David Ringham's Jaguar XJS alongside the similar machine of Cliff Ryan. Then uh, the uh, cars that failed to finish yesterday. Michael Holtz, Jaguar, Dan McKay, Ford Fiesta. Craig Owens, Sierra Cosworth starts alongside the Fiesta XR2 of James Dunkley. Then uh, Fiesta of Anton Martin, Jaguar XK8 of Chris Boone. And at the back of the grid, it's not Guy Conyu driving the uh, 65 car this time. It will be Simon Lewis, that car switching drivers. We can head down to the paddock then with Ewan Dunlop. So here we are in Park Fermi ahead of the Jaguars and the Boss Class and I have found Malcolm Harding yesterday, pole sitter and winner in race one. Malcolm, tell us about your quite exciting race actually. Yeah, it was a bit of an eventful start. Um, basically we we got away, it was, a, uh, it was a standing start, we got away all right. Went into first thing, about four laps, three laps, something like that and then we had a little spin, a bit unexpected. I weren't sure really what happened, someone said it was a bit of oil but I didn't see anyone else spinning, so I don't know really. Um, anyway, we come back, we ended up winning the race, so it was all good really. I had a good race with uh, the lad here next door in the angle. It was quite good. Cars coming to the grid then for our second race of the day, the Burton Power Blue Oval Saloon Series and the Jaguar Enthusiast Club Saloon and GT Championship and all Ford front row. Malcolm Harding, yesterday's winner in the Zack Speed Escort alongside the uh, Hot Rod Anglia of Stephen Goldsmith, new to the championship this weekend. Uh, Colin Philpott, yesterday's Jaguar winner, unfortunately is a non-starter. He's not there, so Tom Robinson will start as favourite for the Big Cats alone on the second row. The third row, the uh, Mark 1 escorts of Tony Paxman and Colin Claxton. And then we've got Martin Reynolds, very modified Ford Anglia, alongside the number seven Jaguar of Tom Lenthal. Away they go then, racing over 50 minutes. A super start by Steve Goldsmith in the Anglia. He's got the advantage down into the first corner. We've lost somebody, I think, uh, on the inside there. That was Will Hunt who got squeezed to the inside in the Fiesta by the look of things. I think he bounced off the arm coat. The Fiesta ST has got going again there. Your leader is Steve Goldsmith from Malcolm Harding in second. Sideways in the beautiful Castrol Escort. Tom Robinson has got his supercharged Jaguar XJR6 up into third place. And Colin Claxton with a good start, as he made yesterday, up into fourth in his bewinged Mark 1 Escort. Tom Lenthal in fifth position in the Jaguar XJS, but it is Steve Goldsmith looking for his maiden race win in the Ford Anglia coming round to complete the first lap. Second place is Malcolm Harding. Now Malcolm had a spin while leading at Paddock Bend a few laps into yesterday's race and fought back from fifth to take the victory taking the fight to uh, Goldsmith here. Tom Robinson should be uh, clear at the front of the Jags through this one as Tony Paxman attacks Tom Lenthal there going into Paddock Bend. Side by side further back, Sam Daffin in the Fiesta and Tim Morant. First three cars all leading their classes. Four classes in the uh, Jaguars. There's actually five because they've got an invitation class runner, Chris Boone as well. Harding has a look on the outside, trying to do a Robin Slater there. Martin Reynolds having a look there further back. He's going to try and take Tom Lenthal. But meantime, around the outside for the lead, Malcolm Harding. Very late on the brakes for Druid Tilben. Can he hold the lead? Yes, I think he's got it. Harding will have the inside for the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. And he takes the lead from Steve Goldsmith in the Anglia. Battle is rejoined from yesterday. Here comes Goldsmith along the Cooper Strait. He's going to get the inside run into Surtees. They're absolutely side by side. Harding defends as they run through McLaren into clearways. Great fight between the two classic Fords at the front. Plenty of more modern Fords as we've seen further back as well. Up over the line to complete lap number four. Malcolm Harding will lead at the line for the first time. Steve Goldsmith is not letting him get away. Flash of flame from the exhaust of the Anglia. Tom Robinson clear at the front of the Jaguars in his uh, supercharge number four. Had a double win at the last meeting at Castle Coombe. We seem to have lost Tony Paxman. His escort has disappeared, the number 57. He's dropping down the live timing, so we've lost the escort somewhere. Whether he's pulled into the pits, I'm not sure. I didn't see him pull in there, so he's uh, disappeared somewhere out on circuit. 
There's Robinson in third place. Ah, there's Tony Paxson. Just caught a glimpse of him. He's in the gravel at uh, Clearways. He's gone off. There go the leaders. The gap was 0.8 of a second last time through. It's now up to just over a second. Now, I wonder if we'll see a safety car with that uh, car off. There's yellow flags heading into Surti, so no passing at this point of the circuit. Tony Paxman, axle deep in the gravel, gets out of his car. That's his race over. He's not going to get out from there. Here comes Martin Reynolds challenging Colin Claxton, the two Norfolk-based drivers. This is the fight for fourth place. They're in, diff they're in the same class, so this is for second in uh, Class B of the Blue Oval Saloons, which is led by Steve Goldsmith. Around the outside comes Reynolds, another classic hot rod style car. Martin Reynolds had plenty of success in a Mark 1 Escort last season as well. He goes through past Colin Claxton. Up into fourth overall and second in class. They're a few seconds down on Tom Robinson for third overall though. Doesn't matter for them, they're only interested in class points. Next through Tom Lenthal leading his class in the Jaguars. As is Rick Walker behind him. Walker has got uh, Michael Seaborn on his tail now, and Michael is the overall leader of the Jaguar Championship, the Castrol livery Jaguar XJ40. So he wants to get ahead of Rick Walker and get maximum points in his class. Steve Goldsmith starting to fight back against Malcolm Harding. Over the line they go. Flash of flame again, spectacular from the exhaust of the Ford Anglia. Oh, and a cloud of smoke there. That, I thought that was the leader. It's one of the back markers. Dean Sewell's Jaguar XJ6 at Series 1. We saw that car smoking yesterday as well, and the blue flags waving frantically here for the back markers to warn them the leaders are on their tail. And Malcolm Harding is struggling to get through. David Ringham in the Powerbell Motorsport Jaguar ahead of him moves aside now. Oh, that could have lost Malcolm Harding the lead if Steve Goldsmith had uh, got the inside there. The big Jaguars, uh, there was nowhere to go for them there. They were already side by side out of Druids. Of course, they're having their own battle. There's still a yellow flag there at um, Clearways, I've just noticed, uh, on the outside from the Marshals. So, no passing there. Here's a battle in the Jags. Now, this is for um, the lead, I think, of Class B. Rick Walker, Michael Seaborn and Derek Pierce, we saw there. Here they come. Rick Walker in the green XJS leads it. But Michael Seaborn trying to get through. And there's a car stopped, I can tell you, on the run into Paddock Hill Bend. Michael Holt has come to a stop on the inside of the run to uh, Paddock Hill Bend. There he is. So Michael Holt gets out of his car. That's on the edge of the circuit. Now, that could bring out the safety car. He's on the pit lane exit there. I think that car is uh, safely far out of the way there because it's uh, got the pit lane exit between itself and uh, the edge of the track. So we're going on to the final lap now, and it's Malcolm Harding in that... Uh, wide arched bewinged Zack Speed Escort a replica of the cars that raced in the European Touring Car Championship in the 70s coming up on Derek Pierce and he's eighth overall so that's how far up Malcolm Harding is gets around Pierce no problem he's got to get past Rick Walker as well the class leader and Rick Walker's got to be careful yes he knew that one false move and uh, Derek Pierce would be through to take the lead of the class Clock has counted down to zero, so Malcolm Harding will see the chequered flag this time through. It's going to be six wins in succession in the Blue Oval Saloon Series. Round, clearways, Clark curve the final time, passing Tony Paxman's stranded car. And here he comes up towards the line, Malcolm Harding. Takes another victory. He's dominating Blue Oval this season. OK, well done to our race winners there. We'll give you the results. So Malcolm Harding taking the victory in the Escort. Three and a half seconds ahead of Steve Goldsmith at the flag. Tom Robinson, the first Jaguar home in third, a long way back. Fourth, Martin Reynolds going well in the Anglia. Then Colin Claxton and Tom Lenthal, the only two other two cars to finish on the lead lap. Rick Walker wins Class B for the Jags. In seventh overall, Michael Seaborn, the overall championship leader, only third in class. He won't be too happy there, finishing behind Derek Pierce. Then Sam Daffin's Ford Fiesta, Daniel Stewart in his uh, XJS, and then Malcolm Wise in the Sierra Cosworth. Dan Mackay was next home. Tim Morant winning Class A for the Jags, ahead of Simon Dunford completing the top 15. Behind them, we had uh, Cliff Ryan in his Jaguar XJRS, Peter Moffat's Escort, 
Then Michael Atkinson, Dean Sewell, David Ringham completing the finishers. Uh, Craig Owen, Michael Holtz, Chris Boone, Will Hunt and of course Tony Paxman failing to finish. And we can now head down to Park Ferme, I think, and hear from our race winner. He's talking to you and Dunlop. Malcolm Harding, we meet again. Congratulations. Yeah, how you doing? You're I'm looking a bit okay. sweaty. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. How was that race different from the first one? It's two wins, any difference in the uh, tactical? Uh... No, we just think he got out in front of us and uh, yeah, we just got back on him and got by him and off we went. I mean, apart from you and Stephen, you are miles ahead of the rest. Yeah, to be fair, uh, I think the car's probably a good bit better than some of the cars out there, that being bigger. It's, it's on slicks and stuff like that, probably some of them aren't. Um, so yeah. But you know what, two poles, two wins, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? That's all right, doing all right. Tom, you've got two seconds for us. Yeah. Stay in the car if you like. Congratulations, winner in the Jack D class. Thank you very much. Talk yeah. to us about your race. Well, as I'll be honest, I was on my home for the race. It was an absolute gutter that Colin didn't start. I'm not sure what the issue was, but yeah, just kept the head down and brought it home. Yeah, really happy. Well, look, wins a win. You've had a great weekend, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and like I said before, it's not a circuit that we've done well in the past, so I'm, I'm really happy. Um, so yeah, I look forward to coming here again. OK, getting ready for our uh, final race, 15-minute race for the Simply Serviced Pre-2003 Touring Cars and the uh, Laser Tools Pre-93 Touring Cars run by the Classic Touring Car Racing Club. And the grid reads as follows. Pole position is Gary Preble in his Honda Civic and the later shaped Civic of a Alex AJ Owen, the reigning Pre-03 champion, starts alongside him. Continuing their rivalry from earlier this year. Second row, Don Hughes, number 148. He's in a Peugeot 306. Alongside the first of the pre-93 cars, reigning champion David Griffin in his BMW. Mainly BMWs in pre-93, mainly Civics in pre-03. The third row, a pair of Civics, 108 Jamie Primetz and 105 Cameron Tunio. Fourth row, another Civic, that's Ross Craig, number 169, and number 90 Ian Bowers, BMW. Fifth row, another pair of BMWs, 33 Andy Cripps, 95 Kevin Willis. Row 6, 147, Matthew Rowling. He's also in a Civic alongside a BMW of Graham Myers. Row 7, yet another Civic, Phil Wright, number 131. And triple three, Mark Shepard, breaking the Honda and BMW dominance. He's in a Volkswagen Vento. Row 8, number 3, Thomas Harvey. He's in a Mark 1 Escort, starting alongside the rare Rover Tomcats Coupe of David Nixon. The ninth row, 128, Daniel Stewart in his Jaguar XJS. Starts alongside Triple One Taylor Norton, the former karting champion. He's in a Honda Civic. On row 10, the Civic of Vic Hope, number 251. Starts alongside 26, Sam Goodwin. He's in a Vauxhall Astra GTE. Row 11, 192, John Hillier. He's in a BMW E36 Touring. Yes, Touring, as in estate car. Alongside 146, Alex Stevenson. He's in a Honda Accord. XBTCC production category car. 12th row, 75, Trevor Kiffin, Trevor Kiffin with his Alfa Romeo alongside 114 Steve Barber, the X Pre 05 touring car champion. He's also Honda powered. And the final row of the grid will be Jake Margulies. And number 56, not Michael Sheraton, it's Andy Sheraton driving the car in this one, Michael's father taking the wheel of the BMW E30 alongside the similar car of Jake Margulies. So we can. Uh, Head down to uh, Ewan, Ewan Dunlop in the paddock, who caught up with some of the drivers a bit earlier on. Here in the paddock with David Griffin. David, fastest in qualifying this morning. Tell us about your lap. Well, it was, uh, I think it was the only clear lap we got. There's a lot of cars out there. We're on the short indie circuit. We kind of knew that it would be 15 minutes. You had to set a banker lap up front and then just try to get a fast one in at the end. And a, a little gap opened up in front of me. I think we could have gone a little quicker, but I was pretty happy to get P1 in the end. So with a bit of clean air, I think you can go faster on the race then? Ah, uh, yeah, it's one of those tracks where you've got to be a bit careful because you can be going, you're thinking you're going faster and then suddenly you can be off the track at paddock or something like that. So the idea will be to get, get in front and, and then try and just try and hold that lead on the pre-93 cars. And how's your, your season going so far? I had a, I had a couple of wins, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have. It's been, we're, we're the champion from last year, so we kind of go into it with everyone watching to see what we're doing a bit. And uh, and we had a problem at, at Silverstone, which took us out of race two, so we're out of the championship a bit, but we still got the speed to, to be right up the front, and it just depends a bit on which track we're at and how much experience I've had at it and those kind of things. Carl's coming up to the grid then for the combined race for Simply Serviced Pre-2003 Touring Cars and the Laser Tools Pre-93 
Touring Car Championship. Gary Preble on pole alongside AJ Owen. Don Hughes in the Peugeot 306 on the second row alongside the first of the pre-93 cars, David Griffin. One car we are missing, I've noticed, Graham Myers, number nine. His BMW is not there. So it looks like he's a non-starter, unfortunately. Revs begin to rise in the sunshine here at Brands Hatch. And off they go. Great start by David Griffin. Great start by Ian Bauer in his BMW as well. The Castrol liveried car there coming up. But it's Gary Preble who's got it right from the inside. He'll lead the way ahead of AJ Owen. David Griffin trying to get around the outside into Paddock for the first time. They are all away cleanly. They dive down the... Uh, dip into paddock then up Hailwood rise Gary Preble with a clear lead AJ Owen in second place David Griffin side by side with Ian Bauer not the best of starts by Don Hughes he's under fire from the Civics of Cam Tunio the yellow car and Jamie Primet in the white machine on the outside good move by Tunio up the inside there makes up a couple of places Andy Cripps next in the order then behind him it's the uh, 147 of Matthew Rowling but Gary Preble is already pulling away at the front of the field in his Honda Civic not the best of starts for Ross Craig there either. He's dropped back a bit. As around they come for the first time. Ian Bauer in the uh, CBM team liveried uh, BMW there. The uh, navy blue, red and green car. Made famous in the Italian Touring Car Championship in years gone by by the likes of Emanuele Naspetti. It's Preble with a clear lead. Side by side almost for second. The two champions there, Owen and Griffin, together. We've already seen AJ Owen's dad, Craig, in his uh, Sierra Cosworth earlier. Cam Tunio runs a bit wide there, and off goes Jamie Primet, spinning off to the inside of um, Halewood Rise there. AJ Owen sideways as well, he's out of shape, loses out to David Griffin. What caused that? It's rare to see AJ Owen make a mistake like that, and uh, Jamie Primet has walloped the uh, tyre wall there. Look at the front of his Honda Civic, that's a great shame, because he would have been one of the favourites for some honours in this one. Leading the pre-93s, it's David Griffin. Second pre-93 is Bauer, and third Cripps, so BMW's to the fore in that one Preble, Griffin and Hughes all leading their classes as is Mark Shepard's Volkswagen Vento leading class C of the 393's further back 393 class A led by Daniel Stewart in the Jaguar he's the, yeah, he's the only entry in class A the pre-93 classes uh, further back uh, pre-93 class D is led by Andy Sheraton in the Laser Tools BMW pre-03 class C by John Hillier in the BMW Estates Jake Margulies leading Class E for the pre-93. So those are your class leaders. With uh, just under 11 minutes of this race to go. Cam Tunio cutting it fine there through Graham Hill Bend. Chased by Don Hughes. This is the battle for third place. Don Hughes gets the better exit. He's up alongside. Goes through. Don Hughes up to third. There's the battle of the BMWs between Ian Bauer, Andy Cripps, Kevin Willis. They're being caught by Ross Craig. Recovering from a poor start in his Honda Civic. Bauer to the inside, Cripps on the outside, and the Brands Hatch specialist goes round the outside in the green machine, but Bauer back up the inside, very late on the brakes there. Is he going to overshoot on the exit? Terrific fight between these two. This could almost be the mid-90s in BTCC, Joe Winklehock, Steve Soper and company. Steve Soper still active in historic racing. This is Ford Mustangs, among other things these days. Kevin Willis behind them in his E36 M3. This is the battle for uh, fourth place overall, fifth place overall, I should say. No, in fact, it is fourth place overall because we've lost Don Hughes. Unfortunately, the Peugeot has pulled into the pits. We didn't uh, pick that up. So Don Hughes, last time around, has pulled into the pits. So the Peugeot has gone. It's now Cam Tunio up into third place. Bauer and Cripps fighting for fourth. Cripps snaking a bit under braking there. It's Kevin Willis in uh, sixth position behind them. And Ross Craig seventh. And Rowling, Wright and Mark Shepard's Vento rounding out the top ten. We're on the last lap of this race now. It's going to be a win for Gary Preble. He's still 2.2 seconds clear of David Griffin. Griffin's going to win the pre-93 split. Gary Preble is going to keep up his run of victories in the simply serviced pre-03 Touring Car Championship following the demise of AJ Owen with some damage early on. Here he comes round the final corner at Clark Curve. Up towards the chequered flag. He may be the king of Castle Coombe, but today he's the king of Brands Hatch. Gary Preble comes in to win the simply serviced pre-03 
Touring Car Championship. Well done to him. David Griffin comes over two seconds back in second. He wins the Laser Tools Pre-93 Championship split. We'll bring you the confirmed results. Uh, well, the provisional results, I should say. Gary Preble, the winner, by two seconds ahead of David Griffin. They both win their respective championships, Pre-03 and Pre-93. Cam Tunio taking uh, third overall, second in Pre-03. And Kevin Willis winning the Battle of the Beamers for fourth place ahead of Ian Bauer. And Andy Cripps. Ross Craig taking seventh ahead of Matthew Rowling. Phil Wright in ninth place. And Mark Shepard, a class winning tenth in the VW Vento pre 93 class C, won by him ahead of David Nixon. Daniel Stewart wins pre 93 class A in twelfth overall. And Vic Hope wins pre 03 class B, thirteenth in his Honda Civic. Sam Goodwin, fourteenth. And Taylor Norton completing the top fifteen. Behind him in sixteenth was Andy Sheraton winning pre 93 class D, the BMW Estates. Of uh, John Hillier was next home, pre-03, Class C goes to him in 17th. Alex Stevenson next, and then Jake Margulies in his BMW, also a class winner. Steve Barber, the final finisher. We lost Don Hughes while running third, sadly. AJ Owen, an early casualty. And, of course, we saw Jamie Primitz go off in the Civic. We also lost Trevor Kiffin early on in his Alfa Romeo. We will uh, hopefully be able to hear from our race winner shortly down in the pits before we head to lunch. Yeah, I think we can hand down to Ewan in Park Ferme talking to Gary Preble. Here in Park Ferme with Gary Preble, qualified first and a win. What a morning for you. Yeah, it's uh, well, after yesterday and, um, you know, it's a, a tough day yesterday. Uh, I want to dedicate this, this win to the marshals out there. So, uh, yeah, this one's for you guys. Um, I knew I had to get a great start. Uh, it was a punish for me yesterday. I got, I got a collection with AJ off the start. And, um, it's, uh, I thought I've got to get away well, and, and thankfully I did. I got a, got a good start, uh, initially made um, some good ground, and then I just saw, I don't know if AJ had some problems, I'm assuming he did, I just saw him disappearing away in the distance. I just kept my head down and just kept it clean. I wasn't putting in amazing lap times, I knew that. I was just trying to keep off the kerbs and just look after the car and, and just bring it home. David Griffin, we spoke to you yesterday. Um, you've turned your qualifier into a win. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a really good start from people. I think everyone was just so so devastated by what happened yesterday that that no one was really thinking that much about the race. And once we got into it, it was it was good good fun, and, and there was plenty of action in that first lap. I mean, one thing we've not really asked today because we don't want to touch on it too much. But as a racing driver, how does that affect you getting ready for the following day's racing? Does it become less important? Oh, totally less important. I mean, it makes it almost it almost makes it irrelevant. Um, you realise there's just so much more to it than that. And the flaggies in particular, they do an amazing job here, day in, day out, in all kinds of weather. And we, you know, we don't tend to think of them as being in danger, and, and they really are. It's a great shout out to them. So if you're enjoying the action at Brands Hatch, which I'm certain you are, don't go anywhere. We've got more noise, more thrills, more entertainment coming up after this short break. Good afternoon and welcome back to Brands Hatch here on BARC TV. Coming out on the track now, the Edmondson Electrical Classic and Historic Thunder Saloons Championship. And the grid looks like this in pole position. It is number 76, Jason West in his BMW. 99, Mike Saunders in a Mark 1 Escort alongside him. Second row, Andy Wilson, double winner at the last meeting at uh, Castle Coombe. He's in a Holden Monaro alongside Jason Hughes in his ex-British touring car Vauxhall Vectra. Third row, 66, Paul Wood in his BMW, alongside number 20, which is Sam Wilson. He's in an Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And on row four, we will see Andy Robinson, number 100, in his Ford Falcon Aussie Supercar, alongside Brian Bransom's BMW, number 26. The fifth row, 69, Paul Hand in an Audi TT, and number 15, Tony Davies, in his stunning Vauxhall Firenze. Row six, 144, Rod Burley. Over 600 race wins in his career. His BMW alongside uh, the uh, B1 
BMW M3 GT4 of Kevin Bird. Row 7, Colin Voice with his Castrol Escort and Ian Craig's BMW. Row 8, Malcolm Harding. We saw him uh, win the Blue Oval Saloons race earlier. Starts alongside Josh Ronchetti in the famous Lotus Bullet. Row 9, 74, Neil Philpotts with his Mitsubishi Starion and Clive Hainsford's Mazda RX-8. Then on the 10th row, somebody who was out uh, just a short time ago, David Griffin with his BMW alongside Ian Bauer. And resume the Battle of the Beamers from the pre-93 race. Andy Abrams is next, number 221. He's BMW-powered alongside Gareth Montgomery, the New Zealander, in number 64 with his BMW. Vic Hope in his Honda Civic alongside the Ford Fiesta of Sam Daffin. Then we've got Alan Hersey in his uh, Reliance Scimitar. Steve Waterman's space frame Toyota Starlet. And Andy Cripps will be added to the back of the grid as well in number 33. We're underway then with the uh, Edmondson Electrical Classic and Historic Thunder Saloons and it is Mike Saunders the ex-TVR racer who has got the lead second place it is the pole sitter Jason West in the BMW Andy Wilson in third position then we've got Jason Hughes in the Vectra a couple of BMWs there Brian Branson big lock up there from Mike Saunders that's stunning Mark 1 Escort ah, I thought that was a lock up no it's not it's in that engine smoke and Mike Saunders is in trouble a great shame for that stunning car. So Jason West in the G-Sport BMW is going to go through into the lead. Mike Saunders has blown up. Let's hope there's no oil down there. Andy Wilson goes through into second place in the big Monaro. He's taken a few wins this season. Up to third, Jason Hughes in the XBTCC Vauxhall Vectra. Jason Hughes himself, an ex-touring car racer, raced uh, an MGZS in period. It's Jason Plato car in third place. Then it's the Aston Martin driven by Sam Wilson in race number one. It's a 15 minute race for the Edmondson Electrical Classic and historic Thunder Saloons. Somebody's in the gravel there at uh, Paddock Hill Bend and the safety car is out. Somebody in the gravel at uh, Paddock. I think it might be Sam Daffin's uh, Ford Fiesta possibly that's gone in there. Paddock Bend, it is Sam Daffin's Ford Fiesta. Well, the driver's waiting patiently. Sam Daffin's car is finally towed off circuit, so hopefully we'll go to green flag racing this time. At least get a few racing laps in. Yep, the lights go out on top of the BMW, so we're going racing this time. We're just under four minutes of this Edmondson Electrical Classic and historic Thunder Saloon race to go. Jason West, your leader in the BMW. Get ready to be thunderstruck. Here we go towards the line watch for Andy Wilson down the outside in the big Monaro he charges down the outside and takes the lead into Paddock Ben Jason West trying to fight back side by side between Hughes and Wilson for third place and Jason West look at the BMW round the outside there of Andy Wilson can he get back ahead on the run up to Druids that's a brave effort against such a huge car meantime ahead of them Steve Waterman and Gareth Montgomery they've got to get past them again here West has done it around the outside that's brilliant by Jason West the BMW has the lead once again, now he's got to get past Steve Waterman in that Starless. Here comes Jason Hughes. Whether the uh, Monaro's tyres were colder there, I'm not sure. He got the run down the uh, outside into Paddock Bend, but then West back around the outside of him. Third place, Jason Hughes. I wonder if Andy Wilson uh, perhaps got ahead of West before the uh, timing line there and gave the place back again. Wilson fourth, then Rod Burley is up to fifth. Here comes Sam Wilson in the uh, big V8 engine, Aston Martin attacking the Super Touring Vectra for third place. Really has a massive car, that Aston Martin, some huge machines out there, including that big Monaro. But it's Jason West, number 76, who has the lead of our sole race this weekend for the classic and historic Thunder Saloons. Jason West attacking for second place, Holden against Vauxhall, Australia against England for second place. Germany out in front in the shape of the BMW. Through to complete another lap. I think it will be last lap this time for Jason West. He's got the best lap of the race, 51.907. Over a second quicker than everybody else. The battle is still on for second. Wilson, Hughes, then Sam Wilson. I believe no relation to Andy. And he's going through into third place. He's past the Vectra. The Aston Martin goes up into third position. Rod Burley is fifth. It's the Class B car of Jason West that leads. Class A led by Wilson. And the historic class by Sam Wilson in the Aston. We check and flag this time. 
Rod Burley wants to get on the podium here in his BMW. Brian Branson battling with Paul Wood. He's got through in a sixth position. It's going to be a win for Jason West in the BMW. Up towards the chequered flag he comes. Started from pole. Lost out briefly on the restart to Andy Wilson. But Jason West comes in to take the win in his BMW in our Edmondson Electrical Classic Thunder race. We can confirm the results of uh, that one then. The win going to Jason West by nearly four and a half seconds ahead of the Wilsons. Andy ahead of Sam. All winning their classes. Rod Burley taking fourth ahead of Jason Hughes. He also took a class win. Then Brian Branson, Paul Wood, Tony Davies, the winner of Historic Class 3. And Kevin Bird and Malcolm Harding round out the top ten just ahead of Colin Voice. Andy Robinson down at 12th ahead of Neil Philpotts in the Mitsubishi. Joss Ronchetti wins his class in 14th ahead of Ian Craig in the BMW. David Griffin, a subdued race from him that time down in 16th ahead of Clive Hainsford in the Mazda RX-8. Then it was uh, the 2-2-1 of Andy Abrams, Paul Hans Audi TT and Vic Hope's Honda Civic. Steve Waterman, Gareth Montgomery and uh, Andy Cripps all finishing a lap down. And of course we lost Alan Hersey, Mike Saunders and Sam Daffin. Right, we can now hand down to uh, Park Fermi and hear from some of the drivers with Ewan Dunlop. In Park Fermi with Jason West, qualified first, finished first, great day. Yeah, great day, a tricky race, We're most of it behind the safety car and uh, sadly, um, oh I've forgotten who was uh, got past me at the start, uh, terribly sorry, can't remember his name, <laughs> but uh, yeah, unfortunately he blew up going down into um, uh, the lefty bit down the hill, I never remember the name to corn. Paddock Hill Bend? The other lefty bit, okay. that's a right, that's a oh, right. Oh we had the right! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one at the top, that's the right, and then it's a lefty bit. He blew up just going into there. So, uh, yeah, the front of the screen slightly uh, covered in oil, yeah. but so got a bit lucky there. Bay, that's racing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of time spent behind the safety car. I mean, do you just bide your time, be patient? Is that the skill? Yeah, yeah, just got to keep everything warm, keep the brakes warm, keep the tyres warm, and that's I mean, all you can do. We are in Park Fermi with Andy Wilson, second in the race, first in class. Well, thank you very much. How was the race for you? Uh, a little bit subdued, a little bit awkward with the uh, long time, long spell behind the uh, pace car. So with the safety car, yep. I mean it bunches things up but it makes for quite an exciting finish to the race. Mm, may look exciting but <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't give you enough laps to uh, actually figure out a strategy or anything like that. And a bit of an anti-climax to be fair but uh, you know, happy with second and a, and a, a t -t tight twisty track like uh, Brands Hatch. I uh, can't use all the power and it's uh, should have a bit of an handful. I mean you like it is tight and twisty but there's some silver on top of your car now to your left hand yep, side. Yep, yep. So we can let you calm down, let you cool down, grab that and congratulations on the second place on first in class. Thank you very much. Very much Ewan, we are uh, just having a little bit of a clear up at the moment before we get underway with our next race. The Shell Oils Pre-83 Group 1 touring cars, some very lovely cars in this next race indeed. Pole position will go to Mike Luck, the reigning champion in his BMW E21 323 alongside Mark Osborne, the Welshman, in his Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Second row, multiple champion Stephen Primet in his Mark 1 Escort alongside the similar machine of uh, number 18, Mark Lucock. Third row of the grid, Thomas Harvey in his Mark 1 Escort starts alongside Mark Chollerton in his Mark 2 Escort and another Mark 2, an RS2000 for Steve Cripps on row 4 alongside the Jaguar of David Howard. Fifth row, Stuart Kay with his Capri, number 44, starts alongside the similar machine of Malcolm Best. On row six, David Margulies with his uh, Alfa Romeo, starting alongside Carl Shreve in his Dolomite Sprint. Row seven is number 22, which is Sam Wilson. He's in a Rover SD1. Very beautiful car indeed, that one. I think that's the same Sam Wilson we saw in the previous race in the Aston Martin, so he's had to dash off to uh, change cars. He will start alongside uh, Bradley Bosdetz, who's uh, racing a Ford Escort. Row 8, Anton Martins, Ford Fiesta, and Age Harvey in an Escort Mark 1. Row 9, Ray Kirschberg in his Metro, and Mark Bevington. He's in a Toyota Celica. Jake Margulies, son of David, is next. And he's in a BMW, starting alongside Alan Wayman, celebrated his birthday yesterday, racing his Chevrolet Camaro. Colin Claxton is next on the grid. We've seen him in his Mark 1 Escort earlier this weekend. He's now in a Triumph Dolomite Sprint, starting alongside Phil Waller in his Hillman Avenger. At the back of the field, we have Keith Evans at the wheel of his Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud. Well, before we get underway with the uh, green flag lap for this one, we can hear from our pole sitter, Mike Luck. So here we are in the paddock with uh, Mike Luck. Nice to have a little sit down, nice to have a bit of a calming down after a great qualifying session, Mike. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I, I uh, must admit I wasn't that confident um, during qualifying, a bit, bit slippery and uh, plenty of traffic, nice busy grid today, uh, but uh, no, pleased with pole. And it's somewhere you're used to being as well at the front? Yeah, I, I, you know, I've, I've raced for a good few years and, and, the, and the little BMW really is quite a nice little car to, to drive and uh, so, um, yeah, I can, um, got the measure of it now, so uh, yeah, we can, we, can, we can keep up there. Cars coming up to the grid then for the Shell Oils Pre-83 Group 1 Touring Car Race. Mike Lux, BMW, the reigning champion on pole. Mark Osborne in the Triumph alongside him. Then a quintet of Ford Escorts. Three Mark 1s, two Mark 2s, including that Droop Snoot RS2000 of Steve Cripps. David Howard's Jaguar is next, then a pair of Capris. This is how saloon car racing looked in the uh, late 1970s, the early 80s here at Brands Hatch. Great names took part, like Andy Rouse, Jerry Marshall, Colin Vandervelt, Jonathan Buncombe, and many more. Last few cars coming into line at the back. The green flag will be shown when the red lights come on, and off they go. And a poor start by Mike Luck. It's Mark Osborne who goes into the lead. Stephen Primet coming through in a second. Terrible start by the uh, pole sitter. He's going to be down to about fifth place as they go into paddock by the look of things everybody away well from further back on the grid and well yes Mike Luck is down into fifth from pole position it's Mark Osborne in the Dolomite that leads the way Mark Lucock up into second place now he was quickest for most of qualifying was usurped at the end of the session by a couple of runners third place is Stephen Primetz then it's Mark Cholerton the Norfolk driver in the Mark II escort through Graham Hill Bend for the first time Tom Harvey going well in the Shell Sport liveried Number three, Escorts. Mark Lucock could take the lead here as they come into Surtees. Yes, he's got it. Stephen Primet trying to come through as well. Mark Lucock into the lead in the Olympic blue Mark one Escorts. A lot of understeer there through uh, clear ways. They ran out very wide. Osborne's back into second place. This is close as they come round to complete lap number one. It's Mark Lucock with the lead. He really has bolted in the early stages here. And uh, Mike Luck, I don't know if he's got a problem. He's going backwards here in the BMW. David Howard now comes through. They get round Thomas Harvey in the number three escort, though. Mark Osborne taking the tighter line, side by side with Primet, who tries to go around the outside. Cholerton in behind them. Here comes Primet, gets the cut back onto uh, the inside on the road to Druids, and he's going to go through on the inside here into second place, Stephen Primet. Yes, he's done it. The escort goes up into second place. It's battles further down the order, but it's all about this lead fight at the moment. They're side by side on the run through Druids. Now, Primet trying to get a run on the inside for Graham Hill Ben. No, you don't, says Mark Lucock. Moves out to take the line. Oh, this is superb racing between these two. Just under six minutes of this race still to go. The lead battle of the weekend so far here at Brands Hatch. Oh, a spin there, David Howard has gone. Now, I wonder if that's braking problems. We said uh, that Jaguar likes to use up its brakes quickly. David Howard has spun. Meanwhile, Primet had a look there, coming through clear ways. Doesn't manage to get up alongside uh, Lukot. Lukot's run a bit wide, though, coming out of Clark Curve as David Howard rejoins in the Jag. It's all about these three for the lead. Mark Lukot understeering a bit again there into clear ways. He's pushing so hard, right on the limit of adhesion there. A bit wide through Clark Curve as well. And here comes Mike Luck. That BMW looks very rapid here. Now Primet goes for the inside, he won't get it there, again Lukok takes the line, they've got to be mindful that Luck is there as well. They'll see the last lap board and it'll be like a red rag to a ball for the two pursuers. They know they've got to throw everything they've got at Mark Lukok here, here we go, Mike Luck takes the high line down the Brabham straight, he could go for second here if he gets his braking right, Primet's having a look on the inside, here comes Mike Luck, he's going to throw it up the outside, they're three wide, that's distracted Mark Lukok and he almost let Primet up the inside, but he defends again. This is terrific racing. We're on the last lap now. Into Druids for the final time. Lukok, Primet, Luck almost as one. Wayman lets them through in the Camaro. And it's Mark Lukok. Has he done enough? Down to Graham Hill Bend. Stephen Primet is throwing his Mark 1 Escort around like a rally car. Thinks he's Hanu Mikola. Here they come up towards Surtees for the final time. Mike Luck looking on from third place. It's all on the last couple of turns. The only hope Primet has got now is to slipstream Mark Lukok on the final straight. And I don't think he'll have enough room before the start-finish line. Here they come. 
The clock has counted down to zero. They're going for the checker flag. Oh, Lukok puts a wheel on the dirt. This could be Privet's opportunity. Here they come. Is he going to get there? Look, Privet closes, but it's too late. Mark Lukok wins an incredible race for the Shell Oils pre-83 touring cars and Mike Lukok, right, and Mike Luck right behind them in the BMW. What a magnificent race. A stunning defensive drive by Mark Lukok in car number 18 and he is elated. Well, I hope we can hear from all three of them. Let's have a look at the result then. 0.846 of a second covering the top three. Mark Lukok, the winner ahead of Stephen Primet and Mike Luck with Mark Osborne in the Dolomite in fourth. Mark Chollerton fifth ahead of uh, Steve Cripps in number 40. Class D goes to Tom Harvey in seventh. David Margulies wins uh, his class, Class B in eighth. David Howard wins Class A in ninth. And Mount Best rounds out the top ten in the Capri. H. Harvey 11th in the Mark 1 Escorts. Then Alan Wayman, 12th overall, celebrates his birthday with a decent result in 12th. Jake Margulies 13th, Mark Bevington 14th and Keith Evans 15th in the Little Alpha Sud. The only other finisher was Phil Waller in the Hillman Avenger a couple of laps down. We lost Carl Shreve into the pits along with uh, Stuart Kay and Colin Claxton all pulled off. Bradley Bosday, of course, was a non-starter. Let's head down to Ewan in Park Ferme then and hear from our top three in that magnificent race. I'm in Park Ferme with Mike Luck, third place. Wow! <laughs> that was that was great fun, that was, really was. I I, I, uh, I made a right mess of my start and uh, just had to watch everybody go by and uh, set about picking them off. But uh, I desperately wanted to get into their little party, but I wasn't, there wasn't quite enough time. I think you were part of the party. I mean, yeah, the three of you made up front, that was great entertainment. I mean, that is what British motorsport was all about right Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, as close as you want to get without making a contact anywhere. Yeah. And uh, I think everybody thought they could get a bit of the action. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, they did great, the pair of them. You know, they were dicing, but they were still keeping a good pace up, you know. Fantastic. Well, there's a trophy on the roof behind you. I think that is one very, very well-earned piece of silverware. Congrats on not the result you wanted, but the well, result everybody wanted in terms of a race. Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, it's been said before, but, you know, we, we really are thankful to the marshals. And, uh, you know, great job. Stephen. <laughs> First of all, well done. Thanks for the entertainment. How was it from your point of view? Oh, frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, it's great, brilliant, really. Best result of the year. I've had a tough year, so, so uh, yeah, very pleased with that. I was desperate for the win, but I uh, couldn't make it stick. I mean, you tried everything so many times down that final straight. You saw yeah, tucking in behind, yeah, yeah, couldn't yeah. want to get him on that first turn. No, I was getting a full overlap, but I'm on the outside, you know, we protected the inside. What can I do? So I am in Park Fermi with Mark Luke. We've just about got our breaths back of you. Just about, that was pretty intense. Fantastic racing, was it? That is what yeah. it's all about at Brands Hatch. Yeah, hopefully everybody enjoyed it. So talk us through the race from your point of view, but we, we found it was thrilling. Yeah, I mean, I didn't qualify brilliantly yesterday. I always had a lot of understeer in the car. The car felt good, I felt confident, and fourth was a good spot to start. Um, had a reasonable start, and the other guys sort of had an average start as well, but obviously it shook out, and I managed to get, I think it was second spot up at the Druids. No, I came out, I can't remember it all now, but I came out of there pretty much ahead. And then after that, I was just trying to gain a bit of a gap on the other guys because I could see them squabbling, um, which was all good. It carried, carried on like that for a bit. And then uh, I saw that Steve Primmick got by Mark Osborne. I think he lost fourth gear, unfortunately, then. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I'm going to be in trouble because he's quite a quick driver. Um, and I think maybe he had legs for me, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I was able to control it being in front. I knew roughly what we we're very evenly matched, to be fair, as you can see probably from outside. OK, let's have a look at the grid then for our pre-66 touring cars. It'll be uh, earlier winner Alan Greenall in his Ford Falcon on pole alongside Robin Slater in the Ford Anglia. This uh, result based on the uh, the uh, grid based on the result of the first race, I should say. Barry Syme and Neil Bray in their minis on row two. And row three, Pat Keneally's Lotus Cortina and Nathan Williams in his mini. Row four is the uh, Davies family mini. It'll be John Davies driving this time alongside Martin Reynolds in his Anglia. Row 5, James Ibbotson, Hillman Imp, Kevin Swan, Anglia, Eric Walker's Anglia, Adam Gittings, Morris Minor. Row 7, it is James Burroughs Mini, Luke Wilson, Austin A40. Row 8, Paul Cooper's Cortina, though I think I saw that car on the trailer earlier on, so he may not be out in the Cortina GT, alongside Tim Scott Andrews in the Ford Falcon. Row 9, Patrick Harris, Morris Minor, Nathan Beresford, BMW. On the 10th row behind them, 
we should see Tim Dodwell in uh, his mini, late addition to the programme, so not on our grid sheet. Keith Wright will be uh, alongside him in the Morris Minor. Then row 11, we have uh, the cars that didn't finish race one. It'll be Brian Bedford taking over from Steve Evans in the Austin A40. Piers Grange in the Mustang, seen him in the assembly area, so he will be out in this one. Uh, Andy Mesham's Mini, Michael Loveland, who failed to get away in his Hillman Imp in race one. Freddie Brown will not be starting, his engine failed in qualifying. While uh, David Hall also had problems in qualifying, and I don't think the Lotus Cortina is going to be out, unfortunately. Cars coming to the grid then for second race for the pre-66 touring car, sponsored by Pultec Classic Race Engines. So it's the big Falcon on the front row. And an Anglia and a pair of minis, a Lotus Cortina and another mini. In for an interesting battle here, or a little bit of creeping there at the start. Now we get underway. It's slip and slide. Watch for the minis coming through. Look at Neil Bray up the outside. Superb start. He's going to go from four to first, or is he? Because Barry Syme is there on the inside. Impossible for Alan Greenall to get the power of the big Falcon down onto the wet tarmac. And away goes Barry Syme into the lead ahead of Neil Bray. Robin Slater hanging onto the outside in the... Uh, Ford Anglia side by side in the run up to Druids Hill Bend, and it is the 25 of Barry Syme, the Scotsman, trying to justify his long journey down here with a victory. Down into Graham Hill Bend. Look how sideways Neil Bray is through at Graham Hill Bend there. Robin Slater getting the Anglia sideways well. Pat Keneally runs wide and also running well. James Ibbotson. Now that car. Could be quite unwieldy here with the engine in the back, but he's made a great start up alongside Nathan Williams, I think, as in uh, one of the minis. It might be John Davies, though, in his mini up there alongside him. Similarly looking cars. It's Barry Syme and Neil Bray in their minis out in front ahead of Alan Greenall. Neil Bray understeering like mad there through clear ways. You can hear the wheel spin. Oh, look at Ibbotson sideways rally style through clear ways there. Barry Syme leads as they complete the first lap. 1.3 seconds in it between the two of them. Green all in third place, then Robin Slater. It is John Davies in his mini up into fifth position. Then James Ibbotson. Watch for the Hillman Imp. Third place is still... In fact, it looks like it's John Davies. Yes, has come through for third. So it's his minis one, two and three as I uh, thought may happen. Down to fourth goes Alan Greenall. So he could be one to watch in the closing stages as Greenall under fire from uh, James Ibbotson. Now, look at the way that Hillman Imp is going. He may be sideways on every turn. But it's not slowing him down. He's up into, uh, I think it's fourth place now as they cross the line. Yes, James Ibbotson. Could we see an overall win for a Hillman Imp? There's Robin Slater being chased by uh, one of the Lotus Cortinas. That's, uh, I think it's Pat Keneally. Chased by Piers Grange, who's uh, mastering the monster Mustang. He comes up the outside, side by side with Pat Keneally. Nice to overhaul the 201. See the Mustang's power telling there, straight past the Anglia Robin Slater as if he's standing still. Piers Grange could be up with the leaders by the end of this one. Let's have a look at his lap times. He's uh, lapping in the 115s, so a little bit off the minis. But he's got Greenall in his sights. If he can take Greenall, he'll be in the lead of the class. Greenall passed by James Burrows there, so Alan Greenall, he says the car handles like a boat, so it should go well in wet conditions, but so he's falling back down the order here, and his class rival is now behind him. They are 7th and 8th overall, and there's been a change to the lead in Class A. Piers Grange has got the Mustang past Alan Greenall. Now here's the battle for third. John Davies under threat from James Ibbotson in the 87. That's a beautiful Hillman Imp Super. He's going for an overall podium. Tries to get alongside Davies. He spent most of the race completely sideways. That's James Ibbotson again there. Look at that. Is he even using the brakes or just throwing the car sideways to slow down? The uh, Shrigley Engineering tuned imp. It looks like the minis are going to lock out the podium. Into Druids for the last time. Barry Syme just needs to keep a cool head here on this final lap. Through Graham Hillbend for the last time. Neil Bray sideways. 
Snaps from understeer to oversteer. He's not going to catch Barry Syme. John Davies in behind them. Ibbotson still throwing it as sideways as possible. Well, it was big V8 muscle power that scored in race one. That's no use in these wet conditions. Small, agile front-wheel drive cars prevailing. It's going to be a podium lockout for the minis from Class C, and it's going to be a win for Scotland here at Brands Hatch. Barry Syme, number 25, comes in to take the victory in our Pultec Pre-66 Touring Cars. Neil Bray in second, and John Davies will complete the podium in third. We'll have a look at the uh, provisional results of uh, that one then. Barry Syme, the winner, by 1.2 seconds ahead of Neil Bray. John Davies completing an all-Mini Cooper top three, fitting on the uh, 60th birthday of the Mini Cooper this year. James Ibbotson, a brilliant sideways fourth in his imp winning Class E. James Burrows in his mini fifth. Then Piers Grange wins Class A, Class A in sixth in the Mustang. Nathan Williams seventh ahead of Andy Mesham. Alan Greenall taking ninth from pole position. And Pat Keneally wins his class in the Lotus Cortina in tenth. First of the Anglia's home was Kevin Swan in eleventh ahead of Robin Slater. Luke Wilson wins his class in thirteenth. And fourteenth place went to Ez Walker. Tim Dodwell a good fifteenth ahead of Tim Scott Andrews in the second Falcon. Then it was Nathan Beresford in the BMW, Brian Bedford in the Austin A40. Keith Wright was the final finisher. We lost Martin Reynolds and Adam Gittings. They both pulled into the pits. OK, we can now head down to uh, Park Fermé to hear from our intrepid mini pilots with Ewan Dunlop. Here in Park Fermé with our top two sitters, Barry Simon, Neil Bay. First of all, Barry. How was that for you? We all smiles at the moment. Well, very slippery, uh, but yeah, fantastic to, uh, you know, start third and progress and we got a good start obviously two real drive cars off the line struggled a bit more and I just managed to squeeze in between them so uh, quite exciting but uh, mini space gap there and I took it and uh, yeah it was great and how was it with the uh, slightly damp track wow it was really really slippery um, I mean we tested on Friday and knew the track was very very slick but um, I don't know the other drivers but it's certainly it was like literally like driving on ice so to really be careful and uh, yeah, just play the sort of percentage game, make sure make sure I didn't lock up a brake and go wide. I think uh, Brands Hatch is uh, a lot of fun at the best of times, isn't it? Oh, it's a phenomenal track, yeah. It's, uh, you know, everybody knows Brands Hatch and uh, you know, a few good results over the years, but never a win, so uh, nice to pick up a, a win. Congratulations, and you, and you held off this chap over here. Yes, yes, that was fun, wasn't it? I kept him awake anyway, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> that was a bit damp and I got a lovely start because we do trialling in the winter and so I thought, just ease it off the line no wheel spin and let's go and uh, into the first corner. I got a little touch but that pushed me round into the paddock so that was nice. Uh, and uh, second place but Silver went next just a successful weekend isn't it? It's lovely, no damage, we've had a fantastic time and after yesterday today's been super. You know, it puts it all in perspective doesn't it? It does, yeah it does no, yeah. And, and thanks to all the marshals and that sort of thing they're, they're absolutely fantastic and without them we can't have some fun. And, uh, I'll have to get him next time, won't I? So. Well, you, you guys had fun. We had fun watching. Really appreciate your time. Congratulations. Well, we respect each other, and so that's what it's all about. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Nice Cheers, Bye. guys. That concludes our action here at uh, Brands Hatch today. And we're going to say one thing to sign off today. Thank you to our volunteer marshals. Today was for them, for the Orange Army. And again, our thoughts are with everyone after the incident here at Brands Hatch yesterday. Thank you to all our volunteer marshals, not only here at Brands Hatch, around the UK and around the world. Volunteers who have come from all walks of life, give up their time, and without whom there would be no motorsport. Thank you to each and every one of them. Thanks from me, Dave Goddard. Thanks for watching and for listening. We'll see you back on BARC TV soon. From here at Brands Hatch, goodbye.